Good job, Oliver. Good boy. Sit with me. Here. As he talks to Oliver the dog, as he talks to Oliver the dog, I will beat my drum. I will beat my drum. And in just one second, we're going to have Jimmy Daly. What up, brother, dude? DJ Jimmy Juice. Is that what? Yeah, we're we're squeezing out jams. Squeezing out jams. We got Oliver. We go to senior living homes. We call it music, movement, and memories. Oliver's the memory. I do some wheelchair yoga. Right, Ollie? Some karaoke. They love you, don't they? You're like a celebrity in those senior living homes, aren't you? Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm 14 and I'm rocking like an all star. Is that a Yorkie? Yeah, he's a tour Yorkie. Yeah, that's like yeah. a. Yeah. We had a Yorkie. He's looking once. strong and in charge. Look at that posture. What an athlete. I gave him a fresh haircut, Corey. I'm his hairstylist, his trainer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, Alibaba's? You're like, um, <laughs> like in Dumb and Dumber, and he's like, I personally primped them myself. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. That's so great. And then he opens the door, and they got mustard and ketchup all over each other. <laughs> foot long. Who got the foot long? Yo, so this is Oliver's porcupine. You got to see this thing. This thing is hilarious. This is his ba He loves to get it in with this guy. He's like a little mm -hmm. athlete. Oh, get it. Show him. Show him, Ollie. Get it. <laughs> Go ahead and get it. That's it. Yeah, he likes to uh, have fun with that. So I didn't tell so you. I did a movie called Loose Ends, by the way. You did? It's, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, what's it called? A gangster named Dominic. Uh, and I'm mafia boss, and so I carry Oliver around. It's on YouTube. We'll have to, mm -hmm. I'll have to send you the link, but it's called Loose Ends. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll, it's like I an will. hour and 20 minutes, so it was actually a pretty cool feature film that my buddies did for, for real cheap, um, okay. and they were in Creed with me. Okay. So we were all extras in Creed together, and they filmed that in Aston um, at Sun Studios because Stallone's smart. He knows that if you film in Philly, it's twice as much. Mm -hmm. um so yeah he went to chester and that studio was official i mean they did creed one and creed two there yeah um, i was there once i was there yeah. once um i did um i did background for an m night Shyamalan sh apple tv series called uh servant oh okay cool and i went to the sun studios for my fittings oh no way and and i think holding happened to be there as well Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, this is an experience. I love your setup, too. The tapestry. I got a cool tapestry in my place. I'll have to show it to you. Let me see if I... I can't really... I don't know if this I can... This is my tapestry that I got. All right. In my nice. place. <laughs> That's exactly what tapestry you would have. You would have that. <laughs> Get your chakras going, right, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Get them chakras aligned, belly to spine all the time. You know exactly the 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 tapestry that you would have. <laughs> if somebody were to ask me what tapestry Jim Daly has, I would say probably the one with all the chakras on it. <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> oh my god, bro! You always made me laugh, dude. I love it. It's all in the delivery core. It's all that matters. The delivery is everything. <laughs> so, so you're, I just, before anything, before we talk about anything, before we like jump deep into any conversations or any topics, I want to just yeah, talk make sure, me. I just want to make sure uh, I, I'm let you know how grateful I am for, for your your uh, willingness to hang with me and 
the fact that like anybody pays the currency of their attention and effort on anything I'm ever doing, I'm always so grateful. I want to make sure that you feel uh, safe and welcome and uh, free to s- speak your mind, however you want to, s- when I, whatever you want to talk about. Don't feel oh, judged dude. in any way. Corey, I love you, bro. You know, gra- your gratitude's always been your attitude. That's why. That's why you and I vibe so well, bro. Like, I mean, I fucking. <laughs> I mean, I, whenever I went to the movie set for the last Airbender, I was just looking for you. You know what I mean? Like you always try to find your crew. Like, mm-hmm. all right, who am I rolling with today? Who am I chilling with? Who am I going to be hanging out with? I mean, we're on the set for ten hours. Right. Who Who do you eat lunch with? Right. Who, exactly. What lunch? Who am I, what who lunch am I table? This lunch with. Maybe even breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> we had like some days dude like 12 14 hour days on those sets dude like and people don't even realize like people don't give enough credit to the mentality and the willpower you need just to survive on a movie set it's well, like, like it's it's hard work and like and and i got a lot of respect a lot more respect for these actors you know what i mean after you know like especially the leads you know what i'm saying like you, you get to learn just about how exhausting it must be to do what they're doing, you know, and it's, it's stressful. It, it, it is, it is. I agree. I agree. It's, but the it's, money's so good. I can't, like, can't knock that bread. Can you, can you imagine how much money gets wasted on like a 30 second scene? Like we were there, we were there every day for like two months. Oh God. And, and that part of the movie was like four seconds. Well, like, I'll tell you this one. Do you remember the when I um, raised my hand and I was like, I know Tai Chi? No, I don't remember that, but I... So, like, the they were wondering, who knows Tai Chi? Mm-hmm. And I had done a few, a few different things with Tai Chi. Like, not much, though, bro. I just was winging it. I raised my hand and just was like, here's my moment. I'm just going <laughs> to pl- I'm just gonna play my acting role for actors, right? So just play your role. So I was like, yeah, I know Tai Chi. They're like, all right, cool, come over here. I'm trying to do the Tai Chi se- sequence, and it's hilarious. Like, I'll try to do it right now for you. Give you a little, si- a little, re- little throwback here. See if I can position this right. Probably not, but <laughs> it's like I had to learn this move. Moving water, folks. Moving water. <laughs> Moving water. Like, and, and then we, and then it was like this. And we were going like this. <laughs> and I just remember doing this for like eight hours. And they didn't use any of it, Corey. They literally used zero. And yeah. and they they had to set they had that to do that uh, had us do that so that we were almost moving the water to bring that big white fluffy animal that uh i can't remember it the name of that it's kind of like the the dragon in that story yeah that's that the name of that creature is it's a sea bison yes and and his name was appa thank you appa so we're we're direct we're trying to bring him into the water village you know what i mean and they had us do that whole tai chi sequence over and over again and paid us like we were special skills like, so we got paid like we were in the union and we had these special skills. So they're paying us like four or $500. <laughs> and, and, they, and like, you know what I mean? Like, like it was and like, then they don't use it. It, it was insane, like, dude. There was like 10 of us that got like 10 grand between the, the, the 10 of us for four hours of work. And then they, even, they, just ended, they ended up blurring us out because like they're like, oh, we're not even going to really use it. We'll just put them in the background and kind of blur them out. And you can like see us just as figures doing this Tai Chi. You can't actually see any of our faces. <laughs> But I mean, I feel that about any any like TV show, movie, or anything, especially like stuff that sit. like I, I've done background work in, sit or like extra work. It's like, sit down. You're so a part of, like, you're you're just kind of like a spoke on the wheel, but like such a small small cog in the machine. As as a as an extra, and then you're like. And then you're just like kind of wrangled. Oliver didn't like going inside. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> 
I could tell. Maybe let them out, but there's there's cars that drive through the village, the farm, you know, because there's a cut through road. Mm -hmm. I'll let you out. Come on out, bud. Come on. You can come out. <laughs> Didn't mean to cut you off, Corey. So you're That's just okay. talking about how much money is invested in these scenes. Yeah, like the 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 budget for something like that could be. Well, dude, they had a hundred and twenty-five million dollar budget, and they went yeah, over budget, it's, like it's two twenty-five, I think. Yeah, that's nuts, dude. Talking two hundred and twenty-five, we're talking about a quarter billion dollars, mm -hmm. and that's the reason, main reason why they didn't do a trilogy. Remember they? Remember when I saw you at the? Um, we went to the open call for the um, Last Airbender two, and they right, were. Right. It was yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, I right. thought we thought it was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I completely, happen. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, dude, like that was crazy because like we went because I mean it was a, it was at the convention center and like we, it was hours long, but like it, we th everyone thought that there was definitely going to be a second one, and then Disney dropped it. Or yeah, Nickelodeon? I don't even know. I think it was a Disney production, wasn't it? No, it's Nickelodeon. Mm. It was a Nickelodeon. How about that for a Quizzo question. Yes, I'm gonna I love it. Tri trivia, trivia host. So I do trivia. I do quizzo events. So if right, I get your... one, I'm just going to have you do it. So if I book any quizzo trivia, I'm going to have you be the host, show you how to use the equipment, and bada bing, bada boom. I mean, we can do karaoke events. We, we definitely need to set it up. I mean, my buddy's got photo booths, so we do a lot of photo booth events. Okay. And then I also have this party rental company that I want to throw out there that I used to work for called Beanie Bounce Party Rentals. They're located in uh, Concha Hawk in Norristown area, but they do moon bounces. The, and, like they have a moon bounce that you can be that turns into a water slide. You know, you blow them up, and they're a huge hit. You know, con candy machine, snow cone machine, popcorn machine, whatever you want. But and it's all about party daily, bro. We party daily, gym daily, core. I, my, I, dude, I just watched your um, your thing about the food. Oh, the, good. The the, uh, the processed. Yeah. The I, Weird Al Yankovic video. Right, and you were like talk about the 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 party, and then it made me think of that. That dude, it that, makes that me group. so happy that you watched it. Because when I drive on happy by, day. I'm trying to find food quick on the fly. We pick fruit to eat, but there's only fast food when we're on the street. You eat Mickey D's, it's only going to lead to obesity. Roll up in a Burger King, roll out with your energy dwindling. Gross. Ooh, look at that food. Gross. Ooh, look at that food. Gross. Ooh, look at that food. It's processed. Gross. Ooh, look at that food. Gross. Ooh, look at that food. Gross. Look at that food. It's processed, man. It's processed and we know it. That's the thing. Like I, I'm super passionate about nutrition, Corey, at this point in my life because I felt like it helped me heal. I don't know about your experience with healing and how much your diet mattered in your recovery. You know what I mean? And we haven't ever had the opportunity to really talk about that and get deep with that. But like when you have chronic pain and you're in pain every day, you're going to change. Pain's yeah. the number one factor, bro, <laughs> in changing. <laughs> I don't care who you are. <laughs> you have enough pain. You're going to change. So, well, I want I want us to I want us to get a, like a workout in together. Yeah, we gotta do that, bro. I, like, so we can my, go to any LA Fitness under my mm -hmm. membership. I have a guest pass for you, so you're always welcome with me. Nice, and I mean, nice. if you have a facility, great. I actually do circuit workouts here on the farm, you know. So, like, mm -hmm. I'll set up like a little six uh, stage circuit workout, and we can do that here, man. You just come over here, It'd be awesome. We cool. videotape that, you know, do a podcast with that too. We have one of the one of those uh, flash bulbs, little videos. Yeah, well, I got a, tr a tripod that can like move with the remote, you know, so can literally go from station to station, you know. I mean, I I'll be honest with you, like I'm just so grateful for you because like this is like you're bringing out my passion, like my purpose and passion is to like entertain, but like I want to like I want to make content and I want to film stuff that's going to help people. Like, I just love helping people. Like I'm all about that. Like there's nothing more that I, I get gratification and, um, um, enthusiasm, like, you know, in spirit, like mm -hmm. it comes from the Greek word for in spirit, like enthusiasm. I have tons of it. 
and the you know just doing that i feel like is part of my purpose like especially going into senior living homes Corey. i was in a really depressed place and i saw this netflix documentary called the voice within and this guy was just going into senior living homes with ear pods and uh or headphones and just putting them on these people and then they put them on and they come to life they're in a wheelchair all of a sudden they're dancing or they're singing and like music has a special part of your soul because of the frequency vibration mm -hmm. hurts whatever you want to call it i don't care there's a chamber you can forget your kid's name you can lose track of everything you ever did in your life but you'll remember that song and when i had ruby she was 101 it was her birthday it was my first dj gig i was volunteering at sunrise of haverford feel like it was yesterday it's like near suburban square she sang that whole song she was like three little birds she was like don't worry about the thing because every little thing is gonna be all right and i was like dude this is crazy you know what i mean Corey? it's like you're seeing a woman that's 101 it's her birthday <laughs> and her kids are like there and her grandkids and it's like a memory that's gonna never be forgotten by like 30 people right yeah. so like it's locked that's in there special. forever yeah. like a, a game changing memory <laughs> For a but family. That, now that song is different for everybody now. You'll never oh, hear yeah, that, that song, song the same. It has to be. Right. It has to be one of the most impactful like songs for me just from that one experience for sure. But hell yeah, man. I mean, I gotta tell you, Corey, you're a walking miracle, bro. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I, like God has I, a purpose for you, and like I, I knew that right away. Like, because I was just—I'll be honest with you—I was stunned when you said that you had um, to have um, your, you know, your head cut open. I didn't exactly know what you had um, going on, you know, in your yeah. brain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But guess what? Sometimes <laughs> you need to get some stuff done to get it back and right. Yeah, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta crack some eggs to make an omelet, and I cracked this egg <laughs> right open. Crack some eggs to make an omelet, Ollie. Right? Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, man. It was it was it was great to see you the other day, and I was I, it was it was funny because like so many people, I I meet so many people so often, like that. It was funny that as soon as as soon as I saw you and I heard your voice. And you were like, Corey. I was like, Jimmy, what's up? <laughs> yeah, dude. It was, it was like we just left off where we left right. off. Yeah, we just yeah. left off where we left <laughs> off. Took off where we left off. And then I and then I was like, oh man, it's it's funny that you recognized me. And you were like, Yep, yeah, Facebook. <laughs> well, it was it was you yeah, when you said that, I was like, Corey, man, I, I follow you all the time, bro. I'm I'm so into what you're doing because if I'll be honest with you, Corey, I've met tens of thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands between caddy and bartending, you know, doing all the jobs I do are service jobs. I've never, ever really had a real job um, mm -hmm. in my life. You know, like I worked at the men's warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. I put a good, put you in a suit, suit you up, get you ready. Tuxedo, what you need. But like, um, I mean, in reality, I, I was just like, I was always so fascinated and in love with you because you were always pursuing what you love because you can easily go and get a job and you can get that nine to five. You can get that cubicle gig. You can get that job that you're traveling, seeing the world. You can get a job where, you know, you're making hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars and you're just miserable. I have like, to say, Jim. I mean, it's, it's like, cause you're not, you're not, you're not following that passion. Like, that's what I was talking to you about when we were going to say like straight up, what were we going to talk about today? Like, I was just asking you, I was like, yo, Corey on some real shit. Like, what are we going to talk about today? And I was like, I said, well, I like to talk about purpose and passion, you know, law of attraction, manifesting, you know, having that zest, that, that shit that brings the fucking life out of you. Like what? You're going to die for. What are you willing to die for kind of shit, bro? You're not fully clean unless you're zest fully clean. Yes. <laughs> Yo, well played. Good delivery. 
<laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah, fucking nuts. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't. I don't really like. I don't do a whole lot of like mapping out how we're gonna have conversations. I just want it uh, mainly to be like, for the most part, I wanted to make sure that anything I record or anything I put out is something I'd want to hear. Something I'd yeah. I'd participate in. Amen. Consuming. Amen. Something you believe in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like I don't have much hope. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this straight up. This is my thing. Like when people are like, oh, I hope this happens, or I'm trying. No, you're either doing it or you're not doing it. You mm-hmm. either have faith in it and you believe it's done, or you don't. It's that simple. I, I I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna beat around the bush, and like. I'm going to get down to that dirty, dirty, deep, dark spot because for me, I've had to hit rock bottom and hit like really dark places in my life to get that enthusiasm and that zest fully clean and that energy that like keeps me going because like, I mean, dude, I, when COVID happened, I lost everything, you know, like (laughs) I had to like redefine myself, like. And then that, and that's, I'm not alone. So right. many people sacrificed their whole life to not get vaccinated, even like nurses and pilots. And like, and then you hear about all this, the, 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 like the stuff that comes along with the consequences of getting it. And then the, you know, the berating and the verbal abuse you get for not getting it. It's like, it's like, there's so much judgment and so many people want to, you know, just tell you how to live tell you what to believe in, tell you, um, to be gay or straight or, you know, Oh, you're, you're, you know, I don't even, I don't, I don't care to judge anybody. And that's like, that's just part of me. That's who I am. Like, I don't care. Like I'm, I'm more focused on me because all I know is I have the serenity prayer tattooed on me and I ask God to grant me the serenity to accept the things I can and cannot change, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause like, there's there's things you can change and there's things you can't you know god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change and courage to change the things i can and then the wisdom to know the the difference because i've been going through my whole life thinking i can change people thinking i can change you know certain bullshit around me oh dude (laughs) and the only thing i can really change is me you know is it that that savior complex that that i know i have in, yeah. in that serenity yeah. prayer, yeah, that, that serenity prayer, that yep. that wisdom to me is such strength now, and yeah. that wisdom has given me such strength. I think about pow, pow. that all the time. Pow, I think pow. about pow pow exactly pow 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 power wheels pow power <laughs> wheels power wheels. We're gonna do all '80s television commercials for a thousand. Fucking love it. Let's go, <laughs> dude. They got rid of Mister and Mrs. Potato Head. No, no, it was only Potato Head. <laughs> it's just Potato Head person. <laughs> it comes, it comes with the, it comes with you the Mister. Me, dude. Like I gotta be honest with you, that was one of the when that happened, and I heard that on TV. <laughs> I thought to myself, what the fuck is going on? It, it comes with the female lips and the male lips. <laughs> I, I think I think everything everything in the world should be non-binary. I think I think only two options for everything is awful and wrong and stupid. Like I think there can't like there always there isn't always a right and a wrong answer. There's always a gray area where where it's you know it's not all the way right and it's not all the way wrong. There is a middle ground for so many things. There is a third way on so many things. Oh, you're devil's advocate. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I played devil's advocate my whole life because my dad's a lawyer. I told my dad, I was joking with my dad. I go, dad, you know why they bury uh, lawyers 12 feet deep instead of six feet deep? Because deep down, they're good people, dad. (laughs) (laughs) But that's like, you fucking asshole. I'm a lawyer. I go, no, dad, you're the best lawyer, dude. Because like you actually care about people. And like, that's the cool thing, man. Like. It's, 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 it, it, what's fascinating to me, um, and I'll be honest with you right now is that like, 
there's so many jobs out there, Corey, you know what I mean? And there's so many things that people do. And there's so many opportunities to get swindled and get taken advantage of, you know? Like I th- I thought back on my life about all the different times that I made really poor decisions, right? And I got manipulated by people or like I can point the finger. But like, for example... My parents pulled me out of Penn State University because they were worried about me. My parents love me. Unconditional love, right? And I'm at Penn State, and I'm partying. I'm at Penn State. Let's go. Happy Valley, right? Coming from an all-boy prep school. Graduated with like 200 and change. 220. Maybe 230 dudes. And now I'm in class with 700 kids. And there's like 300 girls. How am I going to be able to pay attention to anything? I got 300 women in my theater class with 700 people, and then I'm going to an econ class that has 700 people, and it, you know what I mean? It's just, it was massive, bro. It was like, we're talking 20,000 graduate students, 20,000 medical students, and 40,000 undergrad. We're talking about 80,000 children, adult children, 18 to 24, 25. And my parents pulled me out, and I said, I'm going to become an actor and a bartender. How do you like them apples? My dad's like, fucking mother <laughs> But it's all good. Everything happens for a reason, right, Corey? Yeah, I mean, the I think that I think I think that that for sure is a valid concern that they had. Like you're they know who they know you. They it's not like you're like, oh, those are completely unwarranted worries to have. Like, oh, yeah, they're, exactly. They're fully valid in in like watching you be a distractible boy your entire life. Yes. And then they probably see what your grades are, like how your how your uh, academics are doing, right? Well, yeah, you're right. Compared to being National Honor Society, you know, straight A student, like 3.8 GPA, I guess I graduated with, whatever. Mm-hmm. I was really smart because I studied and I worked hard because my parents paid a lot of money to send me to St. Joe's Prep. So mm-hmm. I had enough respect for my parents to work hard. It was, it was about being disciplined, but also having that football, basketball, and lacrosse, that structure, you know what I mean? That the, and doing theater, you know, and student council, you know what I mean? Corey, like having structure in your life, how important that is, mm-hmm. like having like things that you have to be at and like having a, um, a routine is so crucial to successful people in life is what I've mm-hmm. learned. And then when I went to Penn state, I lost that in, mm-hmm. in all honesty. Cause I wasn't yeah. playing a sport anymore and I joined a fraternity and, you know, I played some, <laughs> you know, intramural sports and whatnot, but it was just too much for me, Corey. And my parents knew that. Yeah. Too much, bro. Overstimulated, bro. It, I was just saying to you earlier, like before we were recording, we were talking, I was like, how funny is it to be like an ADD kid who like <laughs> is grown up now and sees that the entire world is now ADD kids too. Yeah, that's exactly what we were talking about about 30 minutes before. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is a I love ADD it, Corey. I love how you brought now. that in, dude. That's so perfect, Corey. I'm glad, so happy you said that, dude, because it's like, so funny. It's it perfect. Was, it was funny because I spent so much time like feeling bullied and shamed for having it and being called. Dude, we both, you, bo- you told me that you stayed back in first grade yeah. before we got yeah. on, on, the, on, the, on the call. Yeah. And well, I stayed I back think- in first grade, and that was the way for them to try to slow down the um the process you know change up the environment in a way because now you have a new class of kids and you have a new study habit and a new programming because like yeah i couldn't be in a classroom setting because uh i was so overstimulated and i was a distraction i i wasn't helping the kids learn you know i was the annoyance almost you know it's funny man my when when my mom when my mom uh I guess made the decision to have me repeat first grade. She switched me schools. So that oh, the no kids way. That you switched I was schools. In, yeah. So the kids that I was in first grade with didn't see me still in first grade. She oh, didn't wow. want me to feel that shame. She switched me schools during that. No fucking way. That's that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's even crazier than me, core core. Cause at least it. when I stayed back, I was in class with my cousin. Okay. And like the worst yeah, I, part was my cousin, my cousin left school 
um, or change schools in like fifth or sixth grade. And I was all pissed off because I uh, didn't want him to leave, you know, and he was like my best friend after staying back. This is one year difference. Yeah, it was like and like I, I um you know when my parents kept me back it was interesting because I was doing the van, you know, and doing like one on one and I got smarter. Like it was kind of weird how like my reading and my speech got better. So my like pronunciation <laughs> everything Pronun- Pronounced. Pronunciation. <laughs> Pronounced. There, see how there's a noun in there? A noun. Noun. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, but when I, when I, when I, I have to say, man, and I have to, I was in Catholic school for the first, like the first couple of years I was in school. And I have to say this nun really pulled me aside. Like she kept me the whole summer to make sure I knew how to read, to prepare oh, for awesome. me to go to the next school, to the oh, different, she, she knew, you. she knew she I was going to go to that other school, but she wanted to make sure I was ready for it. Oh, she was, that's wanted so wanted to make cool, sure man. I was ready for the first grade. That's love. That's, that's a cool yeah. kind of love, bro. Yeah, I so thanks to my mom and thanks to Sister Leonora from Sister Leonora. We're throwing a holla to Sister Leonora. Holla, Sister Leonora. I used to call her Sister Leonardo because that was when I was in when I was in first grade. The Ninja Turtles were huge. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's exactly what I thought you were going to say. Yes, and and I and I still uh, if, Casey if you, Jones. I still have so much Ninja Turtle stuff around my house. What is that? It's like a it's a little um, a little pencil case, I guess. Dude, I love, I love it. I have like pens and stuff in there. All um, right, all I right. This. I got this right. Ninja Turtle pencil here. Case. This has got little paper clips in it. <laughs> paper Dude. clips and pencil cases. I love it. And I and I got this little. Yo, I gotta, I gotta tell you right now, bro. What I'm loving about, I gotta tell you about your whole thing going on here, evolving with Corey Castle. Like, I love everything about it. I love the yin and yang. I love the alien, the the spacecraft because they're. Oh, oh, you're talking about right here on the front of the on the screen. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah, I'm just talking about what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah. Love the tapestry, love the caricature, love the evolving of the caveman. I mean, dude, like, it's uh, just awesome. If bro. you look close enough, uh, he's got the same beard as me. Uh, of course he does. That's your great, great, great grandfather. Uh, yeah. Great, 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 great. He might have, he might have a, a little mullet, though. He should, he should have a, a man bun. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Oh, man. Man, I, I mean, I, I, I enjoy this. I like doing this. I like that. Yeah, bro. It, it Thirty-three me, minutes have gone by, and it felt it, like three. So it makes me feel like productive. Like it makes me feel, like, yeah. Like, like, um, I have to say, um, <laughs> I, I, I went, I went the last like couple months without doing any of these, and when I was like feeling low and feeling down. My mother was like, "Go record a couple podcasts. That'll make you feel better." And I love your mom. I got. I yeah. can't wait to meet your mom. Your mom she, seems like I'd be a big fan of your mom. I, I am a big fan of my mom as well. I think my mom and your mom would be buddies. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> oh, I don't think I know so. Let me rephrase that. I know so. <laughs> if your mom likes tennis, my mom would be your mom's best friend. <laughs> Oh, my, my mom, my mom doesn't play no tennis. Oh, you left. My mom don't play no tennis. Uh, I have to say. Oh man. Uh. Corey, are we good? Yeah, dude. My bad, dude. I touched the. I was trying to wipe something off the screen, and I got it out of here. That 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 happens. That happens. It happens. It's normal. No, normal. Normal wipes. Normal wipes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, go 
story. I, I used to I used to work at a I used to work at a warehouse, and yeah, the guy. Uh, I I worked in like the decal department in the back of the warehouse, but there was this so. guy, this guy who drove a forklift every day. He was always driving a forklift. He okay. He had no front teeth, so he couldn't say he couldn't say words that had F's in them. Like he could say them, but the F's would turn to P's. He would say, "Get out of the fucking way of my fucking forklift." My fucking pork lip. <laughs> and, and and he once told me about uh, about um not setting alarms on his phone because because he has a wife that sets alarms and she'll wake him up and she said huh. and he said I don't need no alarms on my fucking phone I got a fucking wipe. <laughs> That's perfect. That sounds exactly what like what he would say every day. <laughs> got, 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 got me a puck and wipe to make some breakfast. Not worried about a goddamn thing. Thank God. Amen. Yeah, God bless that, that man. Yeah. Paying his mortgage. Got his wife making dinner, taking care of him because she loves him. He works hard for her. That's the kind of marriage I would want or a relationship I want. You know what I mean? Like I, I have a really good woman right now. You met Michelle. She's she's incredible. She's like one of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. She's just got a heart of gold. She she seems to very much she I, I see the way she looks at you. She she adores you. It's, it's she's pretty very good. patient with me, we'll say that much for sure. <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing is that she runs a daycare, um, runs daycare centers for kids with autism and Down syndrome, and like they just adore her and love her so much, and all of her employees love her because she's just such a great leader. You know, like it's a like what I was trying to get to in this comment is just like life's all about like like how much of a leader are you? to like your family, your brothers and sisters, your cousins, like, do they look up to you? Do they ask you for advice? When you ask me how much of a leader I am, can I ask you how many ounces are in a leader? (laughs) I think there's 16. (laughs) No, I'm wrong. I got it wrong. 16 ounces in a pint. We got 16 (laughs) in a liter. We're going to have probably like 64, 32. No more. I don't know. No. Okay. A a liter. So a half gallon is 64 ounces. A gallon is 128 ounces. What is a liter? (laughs) I don't know. You got me, bro. You got me on the liter. How many ounces? One liter of cola. (laughs) (laughs) It's like 190 grams of sugar. Welcome to the fucking shit show diabetic party. Okay, welcome. <laughs> Dude. So that's that's a joke. I'll I'll uh I'll maybe I'll clip that. I'll make a clip out of that. Dude, you're the best. Hey, did I tell you did I tell you how um Barack Obama proposed to Michelle Obama? I believe you did tell me this. I just do not remember. I feel like I told you this joke. I feel like you, you should did. know this. Yeah. He said, Michelle, I don't want to be old by myself. Ah. And she was like, I hope you're like broccoli. Baracoli. The only thing I'm cooking in this house is broccoli. <laughs> I hope you like broccoli, Barack. Yeah, I do remember you telling me that, but I didn't want to step on the punchlines. I wanted to give you the chance to oh stop. To shine, you remember what? You remember there. when Joe Biden won presidency? What he what he said? Uh, uh do I don't remember. No, I Joe I, Biden. I, I, he was super excited. He was like, "Yo, he's like, we're going to the Waffle House. I can't wait. We're going to the Waffle House." And Dr. Biden, Mrs. Biden, Dr. Biden said, no, we're going to the White House, bro. He's like, no, man, we're living. I thought we were going to the Waffle House. (laughs) That that sounds just senile enough to be true. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> I had to throw you that one. I was like, that was off the cuff. I just thought of that one off the cuff real quick. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, so I've got just a couple, a couple of quick things. Um, couple, a couple quick things, and I'll send you off into the sunset with a hot dog and a handshake. Oh, you got bacon, Go. the Texas tamale. Some cheddar cheese, bacon on that hot dog. Are you My dad distracted? made them for Memorial Day weekend, bro. You got to do that for me soon. Call me. Be like, yo, Jimmy, I just smell some cheddar cheese on a hot dog and put a bacon strip on it. Boom shakalaka. That's a, that's a pork lip. <laughs> <laughs> that's your boy right there, bro, from work. <laughs> I got poor. <laughs> <laughs> With the fork lift, the pork lift. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> so um I I like to um I like to do I like to have interactions where uh this this stuff is on the record, right? So this is there is absolutely uh no world where this doesn't outlive us. This, yeah. this audio, this video, this form of this platform, uh, this stuff is outliving us. So I, yeah. I, 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 I amen to, to that. I love to uh, give love and respect on the record. So uh, I'll let you know yes. how grateful I am for your positivity. I'm grateful I am for the the currency of your effort. I want to make sure I tell you. If ever you need me to be a resource for you in any way, please don't ever hesitate to call or text me. You, oh, Corey, we're you, here in this you, life you, forever, you. bro, together. Friends for life, bro. Linked, linked. And I, I say that to say, if you got anything you want to ask me that you've always been wondering about, that you never, you know, never had the opportunity to ask me. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I, I want to I wanna know. I want to know, honestly, Corey, what went through your mind when the doctor said to you what was going on with your brain and what and what needed to be done? Because you, I, I know you put some stuff out there and whatnot, but like, what really like went through your mind when this doctor was like, "We're gonna have to operate and cut. I'm gonna have to open up your head." Like, I was what, mad, was, dude. what was what what happened? I was mad. Like, what was, was your mad. thought process? Um, I. Uh, did you ask God? Did you go to God right away? Like, did you know, what, like, no, what'd you do? No, no, I was, okay. um, I was bitter, man. I was, yeah. I was really, I was really bitter. Uh, okay. I thought, That's I thought that my, I thought that my, my career was over. I thought that like, this was going to be something that killed me. Yeah. So I, I was mad about it. Uh, I, yeah. um, me too. I was really mad at God. I, I'll be honest with you. And I, I and then I, I turned it into just, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm going to turn it into uh prayer and gratitude. So when the doctor told me that that what had to be done, I said, um, "Let me let me just go back to my wrestling career. Let me go back to the weight room. Uh, don't even worry about it. I'll 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 just live. Ignore with it. it. It's gonna be fine. Ignore it. Yeah. Ignore I was it. Like, let me just go. Let, I'll be fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh-huh. And he said, and he said, um, if if I ignore it and we don't do anything about it." You're not going to live to 34 years old. You'll die by the time you're 34 what years old. The fuck, and uh, I was, and then I was, I was, then I, then I surrendered to it. Okay. I, I, then I, then I believed that, that my, my, my positive mental attitude towards the whole thing and my, my looking forward to it being something that I can use to inspire people that started taking over. That that gratitude for being able to catch this and being able to survive it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catching it, catching it when you did catch it. Caught that so, shit. So that that switched my like my bitterness and that went away. Um I I for sure, you know, I I thought about I've thought about forgiveness. I thought about so much forgiveness. I've thought about grudges that I was holding that I didn't need to hold because uh, it really, it truly made me sad to find out that like people didn't know about this. And like, I talked to them like six months, 
to 12 months later and they still had no idea that this had ever happened to me. And I felt yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, you would you would have just went six months without knowing that I had been dead for six months. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah it kind of yeah. gave me. Changes your mind. It changes your mindset. Right. You're thinking. It gave, right. I got to the point where I'm like, why do I got to waste any any right nows worried about right nows? I'll never get back. Why, why do I got to have, why do I got to carry all this weight that's not serving me? So I put all that down and um, kind of leaned more towards, um, I want to, I want to be somebody who I see and want to be that person. Like if I wasn't me, I'd want to be me. I want to be yes. somebody. Now we're would, talking. That's who, what I'm fucking talking about. Right. So. I, I want to be some. I want to be somebody who puts out content, who puts out vibrations, who puts out relationships with people, uh, builds relationships, and uh, builds an audience, builds builds upon growth and evolving. I want to have that be part of what my my personal brand has always been, but now publicly. Yeah. Amen. So Dude. I mean, I, I I waited a couple of years to start the podcast, but uh, it was it was something that I I felt like I couldn't ignore the fact that I thought about doing it. All right, so Corey, the other thing, the other question I wanted to ask you: How long did this process go on for? I actually did not, I was not able to follow the whole thing from start to finish with you. You know, I prayed for you, and I thought of you, and I loved you, and I thought about your family, and I thought about everything that you were going to do when you got through this. Like I thought about being able to hang out with you. I envisioned you and me doing this, not even doing this. Let me, let me rephrase that. I didn't expect just, us to be doing a podcast. Just, just bro, I knew we were going to do something together because I had yeah. that faith in God and faith in you and your strength and just you as a human being, like your spirit, you're just a, a spiritual being having a human experience and that's great and all, but like, like what happened? Like, so, um, like you went into the hospital and they, or the doctor tells you like, we have to do something about this because it, it, you know, you're not going to live past 34. And then what was the next thing that happened? Like, so I, did you I, do I, radiation I, chemo? Like, I, I couldn't remember exactly what you ended up having to do. No, they, they, that was an option, but yeah, it, 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 it wasn't needed. Okay, um, great. That's awesome. Good. I'm so, glad you didn't have to go through that shit. Cause I didn't want you to go through any of that. Because I, well, I don't even believe in that. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. There you go. I said something. Well, I don't well, believe in chemo and radiation. I believe in food, prayer, and I don't know, whatever. I'm sorry. Let me let you finish. I, 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 it's, it's funny because I, I, I know I, I feel like I've told the story way too, way a lot of times. I'm sure so, you have. But I'm, I'm happy to tell it to you because you're somebody I truly care about and, yeah. uh, and you haven't heard it and you want to hear it from the source. Yeah, this, I do. This is this is I do. Uh, what happened? It was, it was, the beginning of August in 2011, right? Wow. So okay. August August fourth, 2011. Damn, I had a I had down. I had a show, I had a show that was going to be in Reading. So at in the in the in the building where the Reading Phillies play in that. Oh in that yeah, arena, yeah, yeah. We yeah, were going to yeah. have a wrestling. We were going to have a wrestling show there. Cool. Uh, so. I, I got I got in the shower. It was a Thursday, right? So normally on Thursdays, I'll I'll take a shower. I'll I'll lock the door, turn my speaker on, turn my music up all the way, and like yeah. no, yeah, and no. I would be home alone. I would be home alone on every every Thursday. But on this Thursday, I I didn't lock the door. I didn't turn the music on, and I happened to not be alone. Uh, when I was in the shower, I was I remember brushing my teeth. And then I remember waking up in an ambulance. Oh my so God. what had happened was while I was in the shower and I was brushing my teeth, I, I, I had a grand mal seizure while I was in the shower. And while I was, so the, these, these veins that would just be right here on the side of my head, that yeah, was yeah, a, yeah. it was a, in, in utero. So when I was just a baby in my mom's tummy, they didn't, they didn't form right. These veins up here. Okay. So, Got it. so they started to bleed. I start a, a bleed came into my the, the front of my skull. The, yeah, the frontal had, cortex. So I yeah. had a I had a brain bleed that was that went right up into my frontal lobe here, and 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 I I 
my my brain bleed made me have a grand mal seizure. While I, when I had the seizure, I fell out of the shower and the cur- the shower curtain wrapped itself around my face and I was suffocating on the shower curtain and I fell through the toilet. I broke the toilet. Um, <clears throat> my mom heard all that and she came right in, ripped the shit off of me right away and saved my life. Um, oh, God. Then, then they took me to a uh, local hospital, St. Mary's. Uh, okay. St. Saint- Mary's was like... Uh, we know what it is, but we can't really do anything about it. We don't really have the technology to do anything about it. So we're going to chopper you, chopper you to the university yeah. of Pennsylvania. Perfect. So they, awesome. they choppered me to university of Pennsylvania a chopper, right? I don't remember, but, yeah. um, it was, it was called an, an AVM. They found it an, a, a, a cranial AVM, a arterial venous malformation. And, uh, a, a lot of people have had this. It's 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 um it's pretty kind of common. Not not common, but a lot a lot of people that are famous have had this same thing. The the uh the guy there's a guy on the Eagles. I think his name was Mike Patterson, and he had this he had a seizure on the practice field the day before I had mine, and he also had a cranial AVM. No fucking way. Yeah, I remember Mike Patterson. And I remember that and, football uh, player. And then, uh, then, uh, you know, who TJ Miller is no, the, the, he's an actor, comedian, like he's in like Daredevil and she's out of my league in Silicon Valley. Oh, okay. Y- Yogi, Yogi Bear, yeah. Yogi Bear 3D. <laughs> he also, he also had his like, did that voice? He did the voiceover. I think, you know, he was, ra- he was, he was the park ranger. I don't remember oh, what the Park oh, Ranger's gotcha, name gotcha, was gotcha. in Yogi Bear, but I just know that's one of the credits he makes sure he makes sure to drop when he talks about his credits because uh, I think that he was filming he was filming that movie when he had the when he had the uh, the AVM. So what do they do? Did they they cut you on the top of your scalp so, to get that to drain that blood? Or no, they they, they, they they said uh, the, here's the funny part. Uh, th- when I when I got to University of Pennsylvania, some nurse came in and she talked to my mom and she said, uh, "The this was like minutes after I was just a dick to the doctor. Like I was like, so you're telling me you're gonna cut my hair? I can't work out anymore and I can't wrestle anymore. I don't want this. Yeah, I don't yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. This. I don't want this. Yeah, you're and like then, Vinny. Right. I was like, let me let me just go back to to my life. Yeah. And. And uh, the nurse came in and she talked to my mom and she was like, hey, you know, Dr. Zager's going on vacation. He's going to be gone for three weeks. Uh, it might be better to let that swelling and that bleed go down before uh, we schedule a craniotomy. Right. And the other option would have been a, a gamma radiation knife. Right. So that would have taken me that would have taken me fully out of wrestling. I would have had to end my wrestling career if I did that. And I might have had to lose all my hair. But uh, then she she pitched this idea of the craniotomy and waiting in three weeks for the swelling to go down and for Dr. Zager to get back from vacation. And then <clears throat> and then my mom and I discussed it and we were like, yeah, that's that's the option we're going with. And uh, and then then she brought up that nurse and who said that to her to like another to the doctor when he came in. And the doctor was like, there, there is no nurse. Like nobody knows who that nurse was. Like that was just an angel, angel, an angel that, came, nice. that came in and, and, and guided us. Yeah. That's and so awesome. It was the divine encounter. It was divine. Yes. That's what life is all about, bro. I love so, that. Then, um, then when I, I, I had those three weeks, man, I had, uh, I had three weeks to kind of like make, really make my, make my peace with it all. Make, like yeah. make my decisions and figure out how is it going to approach this? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I did, I did do a little bit of my own research. I did find out that like a lot of people who had gone through this, you know, came out of it different on the other side. Like this, this was right up here. This is like right where all your personality is. This is where like, we're, you, ain't, you ain't losing that. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't letting you lose that. 
no, <laughs> that, was good. that wasn't going anywhere. You could fucking, you could stab you right there, and then <laughs> with a knife it ain't going. It. <laughs> but then, and then they they were like, Break the knife. some of the some of the the um, some of the results I was reading was like people didn't survive this. Some yeah, of the results you're that a monster, I was, bro. You're, and then you're, some of the results I was was no, but like when you're in it, reading oh, that man. kind of result is is something you know unavoidable and but you didn't believe like, it you didn't believe didn't, in it though right I didn't, you didn't, I didn't believe in it no yeah you didn't believe in it and like you people were like you don't uh some people were like yeah this happened to my family member and they can't read they can't see they can't hear there's always something a little bit different and uh i i um I, when i got admitted into the hospital they asked me if i was ready to stay there for for 30 days and i was like 30 days why and they're like well because you might we might have to reteach you how to read and write and walk and talk all over again. And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll be out of here in a week. I, I said that yes. to the nurse right then. And uh, yes. I was, I was on my feet and I walked out the door three days later. <laughs> I, I didn't, I did not. Fle did flex not on him. Let me see that muscle, bro. Flex, flex on him for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't have to learn. Ooh, I didn't have to read, uh, learn any of that shit. I, I honestly, I honestly felt like I came out of it more intelligent than I ever was. Uh, Love I, it. I didn't feel like I think for a really long time I was victim to that shame that told me that I was dumb and you know like was not worthy. Yeah, that I I was, I was, I was a I was a boy. Like an uninformed Oh, guess who boy. just showed up, Core? <laughs> the dog? <laughs> no, Michelle just arrived. The angel. Cool. That angel that you were cool. talking about, that nurse. Cool. <laughs> the one that's so patient. Look at her, bringing over dinner. What an athlete. What an athlete. <laughs> Corey and I have been having an awesome time. This is great. 57 minutes and it felt like seven minutes. Nice. Isn't that cool? Um how he has a yin and yang and evolving with Corey Castle. Love it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, brother. If you want to add in, I'll be I'll be Oliver's inside. But I'm I'm gonna be done in a minute. We're wrapping things up. I, I so, was just I asking mean Corey about recovery. <laughs> just recovering from pain recovering from pain you know pain is something that god gives us you know you're happy you're sad you know pain man you know suffering is just part of life right dude i feel like it's, remember me telling you like i felt like i wasn't intelligent like i always felt like i became yeah. more intelligent on the other I side i always of this. felt stupid my whole life bro and 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 I think I think around that time, not only did I feel like I got more intelligent, I'm more comfortable identifying as a man. I yeah. I didn't have a, I didn't have a role model. I didn't have a male role model. No, no. man taught me how to live my life. I had to learn. Dad from wasn't mom around at all for minutes. Oh, okay. Here and there, but, I didn't know. Core, yeah. But, we never talked uh, about dads in our lives. You know. Yes, it's okay. But but like I I I started identifying as a man, which I wouldn't Good. be able to, I wasn't able to do before. I wasn't able to do before, but you know, once Taking a man responsibility, right. Taking responsibility once, and owning everything, own once a, everything. Once a boy walks through fire, a man yeah. is the one who walks out on the other side. Yes. Burn that bridge, bro. Burn that bridge and never look back. Burn the ships, burn everything. Burn the ship. burn they don't the know ship. me. They don't know us. Who's going to carry the boats? David Goggins. They don't know me, son. They don't know me, son. <laughs> do, do, you remember, do you remember Tommy? Well, not Tommy Boy. Um, Billy Madison. Yeah. When, when he was like <laughs> this, the Spanish Inquisition or whatever. And he was like... <laughs> And, and then it was the Chris Far Chris Farley. We're doing all the dumber for we're all <laughs> a <in> God forgivers. <laughs> we we're all now dumber for having heard it. <laughs> but, oh, I was thinking about when when Chris Farley was helping him study, and he was like, "That is correct." 
Oh my god, dude. And Veronica Vaughn. And then they bring Chris Farley. <laughs> That's the way to end the show, right? <laughs> well, the way the way we end normally, uh, if if you don't mind, yeah. this is the last thing. No, bro, I don't mind at all. Tell me what we do. All right. Well, it's actually two quick things. All right. One. Audio time travel. So since I gave you that opportunity to 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 kind of put all that stuff on the record and ask me those questions, yeah, and 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 say that stuff, I want to give you the opportunity now to to speak to whoever stumbles across this that loves you the most, uh, twenty years into the future. Ah. So who you're speaking to now are yeah. the people the people who love you the most, the people who your life today is a legacy to them. Okay. So whether you're here or not, you're speaking to them. Maybe it, it, it could be you that you're talking to 20 years from now. Okay. But in the next in the next few minutes, you're speaking directly to the uh, 20, 2043 version of whoever whoever cares the most to hear this. What are you saying to them? Okay, well, the first thing that comes to mind is my friend Brendan McDermott. God bless his soul. He just passed away from cancer. Um, his funeral is tomorrow. And... He was one of those souls that loved music. You know, we worked together on um, restoring old properties, right? We used to glaze windows, paint French doors for homes that were built during the Revolutionary War. Like, it was unbelievable. We worked at this company called Chestnut Hill Windows. And, and like, I just want, I want people to remember me the way I remember Brendan. You know, like is a happy soul, like somebody who like I don't have a bad memory with Brendan. I don't I can't even think of an argument. I can't think of us um, venting about negative things. Just it was always positivity. And like I just want to be remembered for somebody that brought light to a dark room, you know, brought, um, you know, happiness to people, whether it was through jokes or DJing or a good drink that I made, you know, because I mean, I'm squeezing out juice or I'll squeeze you out a crazy tequila drink maybe. But I mean, I just, I just know that like, there's so much to life to be grateful for. So like, I keep that gratitude as my attitude, no matter what, even if I have to fake it till I make it, I'm going to do that because you never know who needs it. Like there might be somebody just worse. Like you never know what somebody's going through in their life. So like if just you can rhyme, keep it, rhyme that, it till you slime it. Yeah, rhyme it till you slime it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bust the rhyme. Cream it till you cream it, bro. Bust the rhyme, belly to spine all the time. <laughs> I mean, I got my core engaged and my spiritual core is engaged, my <laughs> mental core is engaged. So everything's engaged in the core. For sure. I adore my core. I love you for sure. And I hope everybody on the show loves what we had to offer for a, a fucking radical, hour. Radical door. And, and 20 years from now, <laughs> look at this. We'll be fucking 60 almost. And <laughs> I'll be like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I'm here for it. Yo. Um, the way we wrap it up, yeah. the way we wrap up every episode is... Uh, you know Jerry Springer, right? Yeah, I remember Jerry Ger Springer. Okay. Jerry Springer would do a final thought at the end of every episode. He would get all okay. the most valuable takeaways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I do he, remember he, it. I remember would, the final he would thought. Give you, he would throw that that good message at you, <laughs> like the most positive takeaways to inspire you to be a better yeah. version of yourself. I love that about him. Yeah, I remember. What, what would your Jerry Springer's final thought? I'm Hypothetically, I've gifted you this show. Okay. This is... The first episode of your new podcast, Evolving with Jimmy Daly. Hey, bro, you popped my cherry. You already know the first <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so what, what, uh, what is the Jerry Springer's final thought for Jimmy Daly? Uh, Jerry Springer final thought for Jimmy Daly is continue to evolve like Corey Castle. Don't look back. Look forward. I don't, I lost you. I can't hear you no more. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh boy. Don't look back, look forward. The 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 mirror on the windshield is way smaller than the windshield itself. That's the message that Jimmy Juice Jimmy Daly <laughs> wants us to know. Oh, the device is not connected. Oh, we in in the wrap up. In the wrap up. I want to say thank you everybody. If this is your first time checking out Evolving with Corey Castle, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for hanging with me. I appreciate the currency of your effort. I love you, man. Let if you exist, let me know you exist. Uh, leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make make sure you make sure you like and share. Just so you know, if if this is valuable to somebody else that you that you know, this would be valuable for them to hear. Have them, have them Can you hear me? Join me. I'm yeah, back. dude. Yeah, your phones are dead. But yeah, yeah that happened. There, you know, it's just um for me, it's about um at this point setting goals. Setting goals, achieving goals. You don't have a goal, then you just basically have no destination. It's like getting on a boat, getting on an airplane with no fucking destination. And like I'll be honest with you, I've been I've been I've been living life aimlessly, just trying to make money, trying to survive instead of thrive. And you gotta have drive. So just fucking stay fucking driven and focused. Be my dad, like my dad always said, he's like, Jimmy, you got a lot going on. Try to be laser focused on one thing. Get laser focused. Like do the senior living thing. My dad was like, that's your, God was giving you that because <laughs> I prayed for that. I asked God to get away from clubs, get away from the drugs, the alcohol and the party scene. And let's go step into a different environment where people really need stimulation and love because a lot of ways their senior living homes are like out of sight, out of mind. You know, these people are forgotten. Their loved ones just get drop them off and they're fucking forgotten. And they need love. They need stimulation. Um, they they need doggies. They need babies. You know, they need like kids to come in to give them that zest for life. You know, we're not zestfully clean. We're <laughs> you're not fully clean unless you're <laughs> zestfully clean. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best line you had today, bro. That's fine. That's fine. The delivery. Thank but I love you, soap, man. Thanks for soap, your patience with me today. Soap, man. Zest soap. Check it out. Where this episode is brought to you by Zest Soap. <laughs> go and enter in uh go to zestsoap.com slash E W C K for 15 15% off your next yeah. order of zest fully clean soap. Yo, and get your apple cider vinegar at the dollar store. It's just as good. <laughs> <laughs> apple cider vinegar. Well, it's not. You're, you're gonna take a bath with that, <laughs> dude. Gonna, dip your feet in it. Dip your face in it. Do whatever just, you gotta do, bro. Just, stuff get, will just get showered. Just, just get shower, showered. Bathe in that shit, dog. <laughs> Fuck that shampoo, chemical shit, dog. Just bathe in apple cider. <laughs> get your Epsom salts. Get some fucking <laughs> bee pollen. I got some cumin, black seed, pepper oil for you. That. Jimmy, what do you do any impressions, dude? You got any impressions at all? There's a bomb in the building. Get down. Okay. I'm so the governor your, of California. Okay. In your governor. Arnold, in your Arnold Schwarzenegger, I want you to I want you to to wrap the way we always wrap every episode. Is <laughs> I have you in your in your best impression say the catchphrase, be fun, have safe, keep evolving. Be fun. Be safe. And keep evolving. Evolve. <laughs> evolve thank, I'm thanks for doing evolve. this man thank you thanks get for doing this top, get to the chopper get to the chopper <laughs> everybody out there if this is your first time checking out the show uh please please check out the other uh 295 episodes if 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 you feel like you want to uh, evolve with 295 me. episodes motherfucker yeah, this is the 296th <laughs> episode. Welcome. Oh God, you're the best, dude. You're the host with the most. Let's have a toast. All right. Cheers to get, you, my get, friend. I love you. Get to your own chopper. Get <laughs> to your own chopper. <laughs> get be, down. Get, get down. <laughs> be kind to yourself. Be kinder to others. Have grace. Uh, Corey, get on the dance floor and get down. Get down on it. <laughs> get down on it. If there's a moment, if you if there's a moment you catch yourself slipping, forgetting somebody else is also a human just like you, uh, try to human, try to humble yourself by humanizing them. Uh, 
Fucking A. I love you, Corey. You're the best. Thanks. Thanks right. for hanging with me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you share it. Make sure you comment on YouTube. Oak on shit. Uh, rate rate on <laughs> Apple Podcasts, however you do it. I love you guys. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your effort. Thanks for the currency of your Oh, attention. big money wanted to say bye. Wee See you guys. <laughs> Be fun, have safe, keep evolving. All right, Corey, I love you. Be good. Love you, bro.